Okay, today I'm going to be showing you a pretty ingenious way to measure the radius of the Earth using only a camera. Okay, so let me explain how this works. So let's say this is me on Earth. There I am. And I'm watching the moon come up on the horizon. So here's my moon coming up on the horizon. So I'm just being able to see it coming over the curve of the Earth. So throughout the night, the distance from the center of the Earth to the center of the moon stays about the same. So if I measure from the center of the Earth to the center of the moon, as the moon rises up in the sky, the center of the moon should be about right here. So because of that fact, you'll notice some neat little geometry here. So the distance from me to the moon here and the distance from me to the moon here are different. You can see that the moon is actually closer to me here than it is here. And what's the difference between these two distances? The difference is the radius of the Earth. And so you can calculate the radius of the Earth just by knowing the distance of the moon at the horizon and the distance of the moon when it's above you. But it's not like you can just get a measuring stick and measure the distance between you and the moon here and you and the moon here. You have to use a different method. And that method is the fact that when something is closer to you, it gets bigger. So all you have to do is take a picture of the moon when it's low in the sky and when it's higher in the sky and closer to you and compare the ratio between the two. And using some geometry and trigonometry and the size of the moon in those two pictures, you can actually figure out the radius of the Earth. So to figure this out, you have to know the angle of the moon in your first picture. So what's this angle? And what's this angle here? And there's a few ways you can do that. You can use an app on your phone that measures the angle of your phone. So take a picture of the moon and you can see how much your phone is tilted. But there's actually an easier way. Just use this sky view app and find the moon on here. And all you do is click on the moon at the current time and it will tell you the elevation of the moon in degrees. And so if you use that app, you can tell the elevation of the moon when you take this picture and the elevation of the moon when you take this picture. Okay, so first let's go capture all the information that we need. So I'll take a picture of the moon when it's first coming up, which is about right now. And then late at the night, I'll take another picture of the moon and see if this actually works that I can calculate the radius of the earth with just two pictures of the moon. There's the moon, let's get a good snapshot of it. Just above the horizon there. Let's see how much area it covers now. Okay, it's 1 a.m. Time to take our second picture of the moon. Okay, so to keep this simple and automated and reduce the manual error, I'm just going to use this automatic selection tool. And what it will do is it will choose about all of the pixels that have the same color as I select here. So if I just select the bright white moon color, it will select all the pixels that it thinks belong to that. And then in doing that, I create this separate layer here. So here's the moon selection and it counts 595 pixels in the moon here. And then when I do that same thing for the second moon picture, I get 601 pixels for the moon in this image. Okay, so now here's my big long equation I'm going to be using. So in this equation, I need the distance from the Earth to the moon, which is around 239,000 miles. And then I need this R value. And this R value is the ratio of the size of the moon in the second picture versus the first picture. And the way I'm going to get that is just in Photoshop, taking the number of pixels in the moon of the second picture and the number of pixels in the moon of the first picture, and then taking the ratio of those two pixels. And then this H1 and this H2 is the height of the moon in the first picture and the height of the moon in the second picture. And then I plug all this in and calculate the radius of the Earth. Okay, now we just plug these values into the equation and let's see what we get for the radius of the Earth. Okay, so I get that the radius of the Earth equals... Plug all that in, I get that the radius of the Earth is 4,099 miles. Now that is pretty darn close. Do you know what the real radius of the Earth is? The radius of the Earth... The real radius is 3,959 miles. <laughs> 
That is amazing. I'm only off by 140 miles. So that is awesome. Just using a camera and two pictures of the moon, I was able to calculate the radius of the Earth to within 140 miles. Now the better way to do this would have been to take multiple pictures of the moon at the one location and then multiple pictures of the moon at the other location and then take the average pixels of those and that will reduce the error here. But just using the two pictures, I was able to get it very close. This is actually pretty surprising. So if you ever had a doubt that the Earth was round for some reason, just know that you can prove that it's round just by using your camera. So it's interesting to know, I told you that the, when the moon is above you, it's actually a little bit bigger than when it's on the side of you coming up the horizon. And this may seem a bit counterintuitive because actually when you look at the moon coming up at the horizon, it seems really big. But when the moon is up in the sky, it seems quite small. So the perception that the moon looks bigger on the horizon than it does up in the sky is actually just an illusion. And it actually has a name because it's a popular illusion called the moon illusion. So what your brain does to trick you, it actually makes you think the moon is about 50% larger when it's on the horizon than when it's up in the sky. When actually it's actually bigger up in the sky than it is on the horizon. There's currently no consensus as to why our brain tricks us like this. But there are a few hypotheses. One of them is that when it's on the horizon, we actually have some objects to compare the size of the moon to. So when it's on the horizon, you see it coming up over the mountains, which you know mountains are big, and you see it coming up with some trees around it, and you know that trees are big. So if the trees are tiny compared to the moon far off in the distance, then the moon must be huge. And so your brain inflates the size of the moon because it knows it must be huge if it's big compared to the mountain and the trees in the distance. But when it's up in the sky, you don't have anything to compare it to. You don't have some trees blocking it or some mountains there. And so you can't actually tell how big it is. And so that makes your brain think it's smaller up in the sky. And if you don't like your brain tricking you like that, you can actually show it who's boss by just turning upside down. For some reason, when you turn upside down and look at the moon on the horizon, it doesn't look as big anymore. That's one proof that it's an optical illusion. And another thing to know, in my picture, I drew the moon pretty close to the Earth, but in real life, it's extremely far away from the Earth. For example, this is the true distance between the Earth and the moon. So this picture is to scale for distance and size of the Earth and the moon. We often in our minds picture the moon circling the Earth pretty close to it, but it's extremely far away from the Earth. And that doesn't change my calculation at all. I just wanted to point that out so you don't get confused of how close the moon is to the Earth in this picture. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. I've had a lot of requests to try to figure out the radius of the Earth, and this is a pretty cool way to do it that you can actually do at home if you want. I'll also leave a link in the description to show you where I got this formula from. I definitely wasn't the one to derive this formula, but it was really cool to use. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And if you have any questions or comments about this video or any suggestions for me in the future, be sure to leave me a comment in the comment section. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.